All right, in today's top-notch, high-level tennis lesson that we're gonna deliver to you, we've got Neil Stewart here. How you doing, Neil? Good, Jeff, how are you? Great, and uh, we are gonna go over the forehand return of serve preparation against fast servers. So if anyone's dealt with those fast heaters before, you wanna know how to prepare. And everybody talks about getting having a short backswing, but really, I think there's a key before the short backswing that allows that to happen. Because if you just think about a short backswing, you might not move the racket and the offhand in the right position. So for those that are very clear on the tennis forehand solution, one of our big concepts is called holding the ball. And you love that concept. Yep. Why don't you explain it to me how you understand it? Because we're gonna talk about how to do the complete opposite of that on the return of serve. But I wanna make sure people understand how to hold the ball first so they understand the difference. Yeah, I probably could have used this lesson yesterday. I played a guy last night with a pretty big serve. So uh, I was returning serve and preparing it just like I would a normal forehand. So getting the racket up, getting the arm out, you know, kind of picturing that ball being here held between my arms and trying to get around on a pretty fast serve. Right. And you want to treat, you want to treat holding the ball, uh, your forehand ground stroke, different than the return. It's a, it's, it's a different shot. It's a, it's a, even though it's a forehand, it's still completely different. And so one thing, studying a lot of video analysis of Agassi, you know, coaches were always telling me, shorten your backswing, shorten your backswing. But what would happen when I'm playing, you know, some of the best servers in the world is I felt like with a short backswing, I felt stiff. I couldn't really swing the racket. So I went ahead and was one of these guys that had probably too big of a backswing on the forehand return, but at least I felt, swear, uh, I felt freer to swing at the ball or I would just move back. But that's another lesson for another day. What I realized later in my career and as I got into coaching is guys like Agassi, when they make their first move, they do not hold the ball, okay? They basically, first of all, their hands are together like this. So this is a really important concept. Instead of having the hand up on the throat, the hands are together. So when you make this move to the ball, the first move, this hand basically goes down and it points. And then this racket is tilted down like this. So when you go forward, there's like a slingshot effect as you get into the slot right here, and then you hit the return. And so that's something that I didn't know and didn't understand is I was probably coming up too much like this, like a forehand and feeling late. And then when I tried to take a short backswing, I probably was like trying to be short, but too high. But again, if you look at Agassi and other great returners, the, the hand stays down and it's pointed straight, almost straight towards the net post and the tip of the racket is down like this. It's not cocked up like this. Very different. So hopefully you learned a few tips in this lesson. We'd love your feedback and your comments. Leave them below. Ask the questions. We're gonna make you more lessons, help you become a better tennis player. I really hope you got a ton of value out of today's short video lesson and you can go apply it to your game right away. Now, if you want to be a part of our growing worldwide tennis community and get the best online tennis lessons on the planet, go ahead and click below and we're going to help you go to the next level. I'm really, really looking forward to helping you in the future with your tennis.